we're starting the video. Hi, I'm Beth. It's 2020. It's at, for me, it's January 1st, 2020. This is the first video on my YouTube channel. <coughs> no. And this is how we're beginning. <coughs> I have been struggling for a whole month to try to get one video out on this channel. It's finally the time that I sit down to do it, properly do it, force myself to do it. I inhale my coffee and that's the start. That's, do we leave it in? Maybe. I forgot what I said. Something about how it's January 1st, which is a really good time to start a thing. And that thing is gonna be this channel. I'm posting these videos. I'm gonna be here every single week, at least once a week making videos for you. And this is the first one. We're gonna take a look at my bullet journal. Oh, hmm. that's what the B stands for today. This is my bullet journal. This is a cover I drew, I illustrated. It took me months and months and months before I was finally comfortable enough to do a cover and I'll get into why in a little bit. But first I wanna take you into the spreads that I'm currently making. I've been bullet journaling since July of 2019. In this book, however, I have been journaling since September, so I've got about four months in here. Let's see. I should maybe tape this down so that it doesn't scooch around too much. Washi tape to the rescue. I hope I'm not coughing throughout this whole video. What a way to start. I, this isn't even what I sound like. I'm just Flemmy. I'm Flemmy from the mistakes. All right, just a quick tape down so that this stays centered while we while we talk about this. But yeah, this is my bullet journal. This is like my normal kind of layout that I do for the first of every month. I have an overview. This is my November overview, and then here's my December overview. You'll notice they are very similar. I'm into minimalist spreads, obviously. And when I got into bullet journaling, I didn't, hmm. How do I say it without sounding like a complete ass? Most of the bullet journal references that I was seeing online were very aesthetic driven. So artists were doing incredible calligraphy, floral paintings, and doing layouts that are visually interesting. And that's really cool, but that doesn't help me. The reason why a bullet journal appeals to me is to keep me on track, to give me like an itemized list of things that I can think about and schedule and accomplish and feel good about accomplishing. And on top of that, it gives me the opportunity to write down a bunch of ideas for things that I don't want to forget about. I don't want to slip through the cracks. Every day, I've got stuff that pops into my brain that would be really great to execute on, but then the next day, if I didn't write it down, it's gone forever. It's just in one ear and then out the other. I don't know where it came from, because that's how inspiration works, but like, it goes away unless I trap it in words in a bullet journal. So that's why I'm doing it, and that doesn't involve drawing pretty flowers. So I didn't realize that bullet journals would be such a great resource for me. And on top of that, I am a chronic procrastinator, and that is something that I've been really fighting against for the past two years, once I like recognize that that's a problem that I have. The way that this ties into bullet journaling is that I have to be really careful when it comes to time management tools, because as a chronic procrastinator, it sometimes can feel like planning my days out, planning what I'm gonna do is like doing the work itself, but it's not doing the work itself. I was noticing that I would buy all of these like tabletop calendars and download these organization apps and I would fill them in and I would schedule things. And uh, I, would, I would sit back and be like, you know, I've got this under control, I'm gonna be okay. And then I just wouldn't do the work. I just wouldn't do anything. The thing is I felt okay about not doing anything because I had written down that I was gonna do something and to my dumb procrastination brain, that was the same as doing it. Uh, it's not. So I gotta be careful with bullet journals because if, if I use this as a way to make it feel like I'm being productive, then it is not actually a productivity tool, it's the opposite of that. So one of the ways that I protect myself from my own procrastination nonsense is by keeping this very mercantile, right? Google that word to make sure that you're using it correctly. Relating to trade or commerce commercial. That's, yes, that's fine, because this is for my business. It's mercantile. Anyway, I've been trying to be very minimalistic and intentional with this. Garrus is horny, and I need you to not be horny. This is Garrus, by the way. <laughs> this is my cockatiel. 
Um, I'm going to refer to him as a he all the time, even though he's very clearly a girl cockatiel. That's what girls do when they want to go to the bone zone. <clears throat> when you clicked on this bullet journal video, did you expect to see a Randy Bird in it? Welcome to my new channel. So, the spreads I'm drawn to are minimalistic. I'm not doing a lot of decoration and filigree. Sometimes I play around with it because I do like the aesthetic of a nice looking bullet journal, but if I let this become a sketchbook, it will no longer be serving the purpose that I need it to serve to keep me on track. What I've been doing for the past couple of months is having an overview page for each one of the months. In this case is November. I'll do financial tracking where I'll look at the last month and our current month, both expectations and reality of how much money I earned, how much I'm putting into savings, how much I have to spend as expenses, what my fun money is and what my money is that I'm investing. I'm also doing income tracking. So every time I get a paycheck, I write it down right here so that at the end of the year, I can go back and figure out my taxes easy peasy. And then I was doing this thing where I would put my freelance work on the left and then my personal work on the right. And it's been very illuminating. Month after month after month, I started noticing that in my freelance area, I would have these projects that I would complete. And then my personal would like fill up with a bunch of different things that I would never end up finishing. And that sucks. I don't want my like personal work to fall into the back burner of the rest of my life. And so I'm changing my career and I'll get to that in a little bit. I mean, the fact that I'm posting this video is evidence of that at all. On the right here, I had a habit tracker, and so every month I would put together a calendar. In this case, track every day that I drew and every day that I was writing down the things that I was eating. So that's what I normally do with my beginning of the month. But you'll notice how empty this all is. I've already tried to film this video. I might post it to my Patreon so that people can get a kick out of me just like totally falling over myself to explain a thing. The thing that I realized when I recorded that video is that so much of what I'm doing is not working. I'm not utilizing it. Like, I've got all of uh, this information here that I'm not filling out, right? Like, there's a ton of space here that's just not being utilized. I haven't been writing down projects. I've got this habit tracker here. And in some cases, I don't even finish out the rest of the month. So how can I better utilize this first page? this introductory monthly page. And we're gonna try to figure that out together today. Together today. I tried to kind of change it up for December and I was thinking about what to put here and I figured maybe I'll do my goals and then I didn't have any because I'm getting, oh God, that's a muscle I have to work out. Having ambitions is a muscle I have to work out. And on the topic of new layouts, a quick thing that I want to recommend to people who are thinking about doing a bullet journal, start one in like a crappy journal. Start start one that you're gonna be fine throwing away. This is a cheapy little notebook that I got from Muji. This is also a cheapy notebook that I got from Muji, but this is a cheapier notebook. Um, and in it, I tried to do kind of like the standard things that you would do with a bullet journal. I even tried like the traditional bullet journal method and I hated it. That was not fun, it stressed me out too much. Um, and instead I, I just moved over to this like boxes system. And if it was filled, it was done. If it was empty, I didn't touch it. And if it was color filled, that means I started it. This gave me the opportunity to like play around with different layouts and see what I liked. Cause I tried journaling here and I was noticing that the journaling just made me feel bad. It wasn't, it wasn't serving me very well. But I would really recommend doing that and trying out spreads in a throwaway journal so that when you move on to your like official journal, it doesn't have a bunch of mistakes in it so that you can proudly look through it and not have, not have it stress you out. And maybe that's not a thing that bothers you. Maybe that doesn't stress you out and you like watching the journey of self-discovery through layouts and things. But for me, I guess to a certain degree, I do like the aesthetic. The subsequent pages after my overview, my monthly overview, are the daily logs. And this is where I will put the things I want to do every day. And that, that is per day. I'm not, I'm not planning ahead with these. I'm just going kind of down the line. Uh, and filling them out as time progresses uh, and it slowly falls apart. 
And sometimes I'll skip days. I'll skip whole days. I'll skip weeks. Over here, I was on vacation. And so I wrote down like, what should I do with my bullet journal when I'm on vacation? Because I don't use it the same way that I do when I'm here at my desk. This is kind of a ritual for me when I sit down at my desk in the morning to write down all the things that I want to get done. But if I'm out and about, maybe the bullet journal will now have like a page dedicated to uh, musings and sketches from my travel. Maybe that would be a good thing. I don't know yet. I gotta try it out. But since it's 2020, since it's the first of the month, I want to fill this out with you guys. So earlier, I talked a little bit about a career change, and I first mentioned it when I described this cover, because it took me months to feel comfortable enough with myself to draw something on the cover of this bullet journal, because it felt like this needed to represent me. And I recently figured out that I have a hard time understanding what represents me. I have a hard time being honest with myself about what it is I love and what it is I want to be making and drawing. However, there's a flame inside my chest that wants me to do that. I have a drive to make things for myself and to share them with you, but I'm a little lacking in confidence when it comes to executing on that. So this cover was me trying to draw something just for myself. Me trying to be like, Beth, you can draw a woman in profile and that's okay. You can draw a bird and no one's gonna think that's stupid. And you can do Gibson hair and no one's gonna judge you for that. And you can uh, do like a cutout geometric pattern for her body and her earring and little filigrees here. Cause these are all things that are nice and that you like and this is just for you and it doesn't have to impress anybody. And inadvertently, of course, it does end up impressing people because you drew something from the heart, right? And I'm really happy with how this turned out and how honest I was with myself about it. And over the past couple of months, as this piece, along with some others, being kind of a catalyst for it, I have realized that I no longer want to be working entirely for other people. I have a couple clients I really enjoy working with and we make great things together because I think collaboration is excellent. However, for the majority of my career, I have been someone else's wrist. Sometimes that's been public, like with Snarled, I was making videos for a channel that paid me a lump sum. And more often, I'm working privately for other companies, making things that will premiere under their name without my name attached to it at all. There's something called a non-disclosure agreement that oftentimes you will have to sign if you're a commercial artist. Uh, it's an NDA is the abbreviation for it. And I've been behind an NDA wall for years where most of the stuff that I do, I can't share because technically I don't own it. And if I talk about it or let people see it, I could get sued by the company that I worked for uh, because I just don't own the right to display the thing I made. And that's not, I don't like that. So I'm not gonna do it anymore. So thus begins this new YouTube channel. And I want to be here making things for you, making things for me, having a lot of fun with it, and being my own boss, you know? Let's do that. So I'm reconfiguring my career. I'm, I'm changing what I'm doing moving forward, which means that I think my bullet journal is gonna end up changing too. What I've been doing with this like freelance and personal, that's gonna come together. Or at the very least, my personal is gonna be like an entire page. Ooh, let's configure something. Let's figure something out. Let's do something cool. I want this page to be a celebration of the new year. I'm not gonna overthink it or use this pencil. This is better. I'll use this tiny dinky pencil. You can see it better. 2020, maybe I'll, maybe I will do a little bit of drawing on this. Some kind of like plant filigree thing. That looks like cabbage. This page, okay. Walk, uh, come with me on this journey. Let's walk through this together because I'm gonna be a little bit scrambly and scrambly to explain what I wanna do. Um, but I've got the generality of it, right? So this is my 2020 introductory page. It's just aesthetic, it's nice, it's fun. This, I want to be a goals page. And right now I'm trying to decide whether or not I want those goals to be the next month, the next year, the next five years. Maybe it's all of the above. So I'm just gonna write goals up here. And I write everything in pencil before I put it down in pen because I want it to look nice. So goals, maybe we do do, I said do do. One month, 
One... Do we jump to one year? We do one year here. We'll do one month, six months, one year, five years. I've got this tiny ruler that I use for bullet journaling. And that's the end of that story. Hi, Gare. Are you helping? Don't help, please. Take an eraser. These are dried pastas, by the way. You see them in there? Just so you know, everything, every time Garrus puts his head in here, he's trying to fish out a uh, dry noodle to munch on. It's cute! And it keeps him from bothering me. So I like it. I'm use my kneadable eraser because it doesn't leave any pencil shavings. Just to get rid of these lines. Untape this because I don't need it anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goals. All right. That's pretty good. I'm really liking where the goals are. If you want to see me like talk through writing all of these down, I did cut that together as a Patreon exclusive video so you can pop over there and for one dollar enjoy my ramblings as I uh, waffle back and forth on what these should be. But let's keep going. So something that I have found really helpful when I'm bullet journaling is to break my months down into quarters because I'm a freelance illustrator, which means I need to pay quarterly taxes. If I organize my bullet journal based on quarters, then that is easier for me to like track financially so that when tax time comes around, I won't have to do all of the work in five days. I can just do a little bit of the work over the course of a year and that's gonna save me so much stress. Very nice, very good, and then i make that Q1, because it's cute. Nice. Is there an R in February? Yes. So the way that I set this up before was to track my income. And I think I want to keep doing that because I was tracking income on like the monthly spreads, but I was noticing that I wasn't spending the time going back to go do that. And so maybe it would behoove me to keep all of that information on this spread, so I will return back to the spread. Over on the left here is where I can put thing, upcoming things. Like for instance, in January, there's a gallery show that I want to submit to, and I can write that down here. So let's boot that up. The goal is for me to easily open up this page and be like, all right, what uh, what do I have to keep my eye on? What do I have to keep wary about? That's a negative way to think about it. What are things that I should be excited about this month or look forward to this month? That's how I should say it. What are things that I can look forward to in each one of these months? Let's write those things down. <laughs> Okay, my Q1 is set up. We've got January, February, March, April, all the way through. Uh, and on this page, I decided to do something called Five Pillars of Income. I think it's common knowledge that it's not always the easiest to make a living as an independent artist. And so a wise thing that I've been told to do is to look at my career having five pillars, five different revenue streams. And those streams can change over time and they're gonna be different for different people. Um, but for me, what makes the most Make, what did I say? What makes the most sense for me, and not in any particular order, is freelance work, YouTube revenue, Twitch revenue, online shop revenue, 
and hopefully sometime soon, cons, conventions. I'm gonna start showing at a bunch of conventions. So if you're interested in being an independent artist, you can kind of think about it that way, right? Like all of your money, <gasps> I forgot about Patreon. As an independent artist, look at your hand, each one of these fingers in ascending order of smallest stream to biggest stream. Uh, these are the different ways that you can be earning money over time. That says January overview. Take it from me. Just believe me, because I know it's looking a little bit blurry. We gotta change this up. And so I'm gonna take my old shitty bullet journal from the past back. Bring her out of retirement. And maybe brainstorm here, right? So I started brainstorming, and then I realized that the way that I was thinking about how to lay these out um, was very money oriented. I was like, do your financials first and then do your like best clients. And I don't like that anymore. I don't want to be financially driven the way that I used to be because I don't know how healthy it was. And at the end of the day, I was not, I, I was compromising my own artistic integrity and artistic wants for a paycheck. Sometimes you gotta do that. And I'm not about to say don't, um, but I want to try to do it a different way and see if that works as well. So, let's do a little sketch. Oh, you guys like looking at Garrus, so I'm not gonna zoom in. So, Jan, you, Ari, whoop, there's the line. So this is, this is the real page, this is the sketch page. First and foremost, I wanna put projects. I have like a chunk where I can just like write all of the things that I am interested in doing. Maybe this month, maybe it rolls over to the next month. I should have drawn this page to the left so that I could draw another page to the right of what the next page is. So flip these. This one's number one. This one's number two. It's number one, number two. Number one, number two. Whoops. Okay, I've got a big section here that I'm not doing anything with. And before, I really only had financial tracking projects, habit tracker, and then I was like putting goals. Should I put goals there? Would that be like a big, beautiful thing? I think so. So let's make this a reality. Let's make this actually happen. Garris, 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 Garris. The reason why there's washi tape on like the first couple pages of this bullet journal is because Garris rips holes in them and then I have to tape the holes because he likes to bite things I love. time-lapse me filling out the rest of this journal and taking everything that was pencil and making it pen, making it concrete and real and uh, effective. It'll effectively not be able to be changed. Ergo making it effective. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Thank you.
looking forward to making long artistic videos on this channel. I want to be drawing with you guys. I want to be trying new techniques and materials. If you like the bullet journal stuff, let me know and I'll keep sharing it. However, I did want to have this be the first video on my channel because there is a lot of power in writing down your goals and having them be public. I'm now going to hold myself accountable for these things. And it's difficult to share this, but I wanted to because often the things that we fear are the things that are ultimately going to be the most rewarding. So if you stayed to the end of the video, thank you so much. I invite you to check out the links in the description. And I hope that you hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. I'll be putting out videos every single week. And if you want to hear from me more frequently, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'm live on Twitch two or three days a week every single week. And if you made it this far in the video, tell me how cute Garrus is in the comment section below. Unless you have something more important to say, then I will. That's also good. How do we sign off these videos? Do I, do I want to say be rad? Do I want to tell you to be rad? I think so, but also that's like kind of like saying my own name out loud to someone as a command. Goodbye, guys. Don't forget to be rad. <laughs> we'll work on it.